After the birth of her fourth child, a 12 pound baby, my next guest says she developed diabetes and could not stop gaining weight. At her heaviest, she weighed 372 pounds and says it became difficult for her to properly care for her children. After a doctor's recommendation, she underwent a gastric sleeve operation, but almost immediately suffered life-threatening complications that caused her to lose almost 300 pounds. Rachel Leyu joins us now to talk about how the surgery caused her to dangerously drop down to just 82 pounds. Rachel, thanks for being with us. You say the weight gain started after the birth of your fourth child. What happened? It did. Uh, I had a 12 pound baby, my fourth baby in 2011. And uh, several months after that, I developed diabetes and my weight got out of control. So you didn't feel like you're eating differently, but obviously you probably were a bit and the weight started piling on. You're having trouble running after four kids. So you made a decision to have the gastric sleeve operation. What went into that? Well, it, it was uh, quite the process to try to, to decide if that's what I wanted to do. Um, so I, I researched doctors, procedures, and uh, my primary care doctor actually recommended that I have the surgery because we were having a difficult time with me, of course, losing weight and getting my diabetes under control. So um, that's, that's how that started. Well, you're not alone. I think it's one of the most underperformed operations in America. And there was a, you know, I guess the most recent data we have supports the fact that more and more people are having it. 250,000 weight loss operations were performed nationwide in a single year from the last data we have. So there are a few things that could happen before you even become a candidate for surgery. Let me walk everyone through this. The first issue is the patient has to be over 100 pounds more than their ideal body weight. That's the minimum. Rachel, you were 200 pounds over your ideal body weight. So you met that criteria. So a doctor would say, okay, it's a good first step. Next thing that has to happen is your body mass index has to be over 40 or over 35 if you're experiencing severe negative effects like the diabetes that you had or, or blood pressure. And just as a reminder, Rachel's BMI was 53, so she met this criteria. And then finally, the patient has to be unable to achieve a healthy body weight even though they're medically supervised dieting as best they can. So I completely understand why the decision was made by the primary care doctor to recommend bariatric surgery. And for patients who meet the criteria, here's how the gastric sleeve surgery works. And I brought you a real stomach to look at so you can sort of process this better. Um, but this is a big deal to have this operation. And it's fundamentally based on the principle that your stomach can allow a lot more food in than you might want to put in there. So this is the swallowing tube up here, the food coming from your mouth down towards your stomach. Here's the connection to the stomach. And this big structure here, this large structure is the stomach. And I've opened it up here, it's normally closed, but you can see how large that is. I mean, you can put a ton of food in here if you wanted to. So one idea, if you're gonna try to reduce how much food someone could eat, would be to do a gastric sleeve surgery where you would take off, let's say, all of this. You'd, you'd cut off this part of the stomach, leaving just a little bit here, which when folded over, as you can see, is, is fairly narrow. In fact, if I had to give you an, an analogy, it's sort of the size of a banana. And that greatly limits the amount of food that you can consume. The food comes through the swallowing tube, but there's no place for it to go. So it's like you're always full. That's why this is generally a highly successful procedure, uh, even though it's done laparoscopically, minimally invasively. But there are a long list of possible complications associated with taking out 80% of your stomach. Now, you can get infections and blood clots for, uh, just from the surgery. You can get bl uh, breathing problems. Vomiting can happen because there's not enough room in your stomach. And of course, because of that, you can get malnutrition. And unfortunately for Rachel, she was part of the small percentage of patients that actually face severe complications as a result of the surgery. So Rachel, I, you know, I'm sorry you went through it, but now everyone's sort of on the same page here. Can you walk us through the post-surgery problems that you experienced? Oh, it was, it was difficult, that's for sure. Um, it was uh, the first year I wasn't able to eat. By the second year, I couldn't swallow liquids. By the third year, could not swallow my saliva. Mm. Do you know what happened in the initial surgery that caused all these problems? Uh, well, from other doctors' information, um, they told me that the original surgery, that too much of my stomach had been removed. 
which caused a stricture to form in my esophagus because of acid. And it became the width of a coffee stir stick. So that's why I wasn't able to eat. A coffee stir stick. That is tiny. Right. Yeah, yeah. If, if you can't swallow your own saliva, it's a problem. And obviously, right. without nutrition, we see what you look like, Rachel. And that's what I want to talk about when we come back. The deadly complications after Rachel lost nearly 300 pounds. What happens, think about this, when you lose too much weight, especially too quickly? And could the same happen to you? We've been talking about the complications that left my guest near death following gastric sleeve surgery and a scary twist of fate. Problems after the procedure led to drastic weight loss, taking Rachel Leo from 372 pounds down to just 82 pounds. These pictures tell the story. Rachel, the extreme amount of weight you lost because of the surgery complications created even more problems for you physically. Could you just summarize what happens when you lose a lot of weight really quickly? That's right, I, I did. I, uh, in the first year, I lost 200 pounds. Mm. And so by the end of the, the third year, I was 82. So how did that affect you physically? Uh, well, um, physically, I had every complication that you could have, but I was very weak. Um, I would fall a lot. I uh, actually went blind in my left eye mm. and had to have surgery from to get about 20% back over that. Um, but it was, it was difficult, I can tell you that. Did you lose your teeth, your hair? What, what, yes, my, my hair all came out and my, my teeth broke, all broke down to the gum line from malnutrition. Um, yeah. Oh, it's terrible. And things start breaking. I mean, your body's not designed to be starved to that degree. And I understand that because of how weak and malnourished you were, you have to make a very difficult decision to undergo another surgery. As you described it earlier, you have you know, basically a coffee stirrer with of space in your intestines to, to get your food in, which is not enough to survive. So the surgeons had to do something heroic to try to open that up and give you a chance to get nutrition back. What, what do they tell you were the risks? Um, he kind of put it to me like, um, we can do the surgery. You could die during surgery. We cannot guarantee that you won't because of your, your condition. Um, but he also said that uh, if I did not have the surgery, I was, I was dying and would probably live for about six weeks. So it was, um, it was kind of an easy decision to make to, to try. Six weeks left, it's unbelievable. And you're witnessing the whole thing. I mean, you can see it, so can everybody else. So what's, what's your diet like now? What's a regular day? Well, now uh, I still have, to, it's still a learning process. I'm still, I have to be very, very careful about when I eat, how much I eat, um, portion sizes, you know, so I, like a normal morning, I'll have maybe an egg. If that day my stomach wants to have egg, um, you know, maybe half a sandwich, but I eat smaller meals throughout the day, but I have to be very careful because one spoonful will, will make me sick for the day. But Hey, I, I'm excited to be eating. <laughs> oh my goodness. When we look back on everything that you've been through over the past few years, how do you feel about where you are right now? Well, uh, like I said, it, it has been a process. Um, you know, I'm happy to be on, on the road to recovery and to be feeling good and healthy. And, and so uh, right now I'm, I'm happy. Well, you know, choosing life over death is a good, it's a wise move, especially with four children to help raise. God bless you, good luck to you. I want everyone to know to help with the expenses from her surgeries and recovery, Rachel has started a GoFundMe page. You can find the link on our website.